It is another scorching hot day today. It's Memorial Day. Thank you to all who served. And today I am filling up our foundation with gravel, the four inch layer that's got to go beneath our entire slab. Yesterday evening I was here putting the top bit of insulation on. We had this on during the initial wall fill, but it quickly fell off during the concrete pour. So I just now got back to putting it on. I used some foam board adhesive there. I started off with just clamping them to the wall, but then ran out of clamps. So then I used the old two by four and the stake clamp method. That seemed to work pretty well. And so the goal for the rest of the day is to basically get a four inch layer gravel across the whole under slab here. I'll have the slab poured flush with the top of the concrete wall. So I need to make sure I come down five inches to allow for the width of the slab and then another two inches for insulation. So my level of gravel should be seven inches beneath the top edge of my block wall. When I start filling this up, I'm gonna eyeball it. Since I know the gravel's gotta be down from the top seven inches and the block is eight inches tall, this ledge will be a pretty good approximation of where my gravel needs to go to, just about an inch above the ledge. So I'm gonna start by filling all the perimeter up to about that level and then fill in the center. That should get me pretty close and then I can rake it to final grade. The type of stone I'm using is a three quarter inch clean stone. Here in Pennsylvania, it's called number 57s. I've gotten some flack about using the word gravel instead of crushed stone. Technically, this is crushed stone, but I use the words interchangeably. Well, I'm about two thirds done. And as you can see behind me, I am clean out of stone. There was a big stone pile right there and now it's gone. I knew I was gonna be a little bit short. I had estimated seven full triaxle loads to do this foundation. And when I ordered the stone, the guy could only bring four that day and then he kind of forgot about the rest and I didn't really press the issue. So I kind of knew I was gonna be pushing it and it turns out my calculations were correct. So I got to get a couple more loads of stone in order to finish this. But overall, I would say what we did get done went pretty smoothly. This is all just basically put in by eye. So it's definitely still got to get all raked out and leveled out. I think it's right about where I need it to be. Hopefully we won't need to add or subtract a whole lot. I purposely left the center footing a little low here. I'm gonna have to use a sauna tube or something like that to block off the gravel because I want my roof ridge post to bear directly on that footing. So here's what I'm doing for the center post. I was gonna completely block this out of concrete and just leave it a void and then fill it back in later when I need to put my center post in, but I rethought that and I had a better idea to accomplish this. Basically, I'm going to use a sleeve. So I got this three and a half inch Schedule 40 steel sleeve. And it just so happens that a three inch Schedule 40 pipe, such as the one I used for my drain lines here, uh, will go right in this and fit in very well. So to find the exact center of my foundation, I put string lines at the center points, hung a plumb bob and marked the X where it intersected offset the measurements of my uh, my six by six inch plate here, put that down and traced it. And then I'm going to get this pipe welded to this plate uh, and four holes drilled in the plate as well so that I'm going to anchor bolt the plate down to the footing here. The sleeve will be welded to it. And then around that whole assembly, I have this piece of five gallon bucket that I cut out. Basically this will hold my gravel back and leave a, a void for the concrete to fill. 
and I don't have to worry about gravel spilling in there. Once the concrete's poured, this sleeve's gonna be about three inches taller than my slab. Then I can get the full length tube and put that down in the sleeve. And once I have that all set and the framing's all good, I'll weld around the base of this sleeve. So they're basically working as one column. And this way I don't have to come back and have an ugly cold joint around this pipe. There's one last piece of under slab plumbing that I have to put in and it has nothing to do with water. Here in Pennsylvania, we are an area known to have radon gas that comes out of the soil. It's an odorless gas, pretty well known to cause lung cancer. And all you really gotta do, especially new construction, is put a pipe in the ground for the gas to collect in and come straight up through your roof. So that's exactly what this is. I basically just took a 10 foot long length of PVC, drilled a bunch of holes, 5 8 holes at every six inches uh, on the sides and the bottom and then put this clean out tee here in the middle with the stub up. This pipe's gonna come all the way up through my roof. And the idea is any radon gas collects in this gravel layer here, kind of just works its way into this pipe and up through the roof through natural convection. You can add a fan to actually make suction under the slab, which really helps eliminate radon gas, but I'm not sure if we need that yet. So we'll start off with this system. We can always add the fan later. Don't forget to have the holes on the bottom of the tube just in case moisture or water gets in here or I guess rain's gonna actually be coming in through the top. It has a place to go. It can get out through the bottom and just dissipate into the ground. This assembly maybe cost $75 in materials and it's really easy to put in now while I'm putting the gravel in. If we found out later after we enclose the house that we have a radon problem, things would get much harder to solve because I'd have to be drilling into my slab into this gravel layer with radiant tubing in it and basically putting a similar assembly in, uh, except it wouldn't be this long, it would just be a pipe coming out of the slab. So it's safe to say if you're building and putting in a foundation, make sure you put these in up front, it'll save you some headache in the long run. Before I finish putting all the rest of the stone in, I'm gonna get a head start on leveling the stone that I have in. I started doing this with my laser level and just kind of probing around and seeing the high and low spots, but I actually found that wasn't really a great technique for, for my setup. It was just kind of inconsistent with all the bumps in the stone. What I found is much more low tech, but a setup that works better is just running a string line across the top of my foundation because the slab is gonna be poured top there and then measuring down seven inches and that is where my gravel should be. Five inches for the slab, two inches for insulation. This to me anyway feels like a little bit more of a foolproof method. Using the laser, there was a couple areas I was at like six or five inches even after the laser told me it was good. So I'm not sure what was happening there, but I think the string line method works better even if it might be a little bit more work. The next day I got the two loads of stone that I needed. Although they're branded as the same type of stone, number 57, these were actually substantially larger than the first four loads I got. They came from a different quarry, so just keep that in mind when you're ordering. Try to get everything in one batch so that it's consistent. As I buried the plumbing, I double checked all of my slopes to make sure nothing had gotten disturbed. I've been waiting for this moment for quite a while. This is the last of our foundation dirt that I'm ever gonna have to work on again. No more mud, just clean stone from here on out. And then concrete. Goodbye dirt. Goodbye dirt. I lost count at 10,000 for the number of times I pushed a shovel or rake this day. Well, that was a really long day of work getting all of that stone leveled out, but it's all done. Today is a brand new day and I've rented our local hardware store's plate compactor for four hours. Hopefully this gives me a nice flat surface on the stones because my insulation boards are gonna be laying right on top of this and also settles the gravel just enough so that there is no unplanned cracking in my slab once it gets placed. Of course, all concrete's gonna crack, but I just want it to happen in my control cuts. In my research, it seems like any unplanned cracking or movement or settlement in the slab is pretty much just due to an unprepared base or a non-compacted base. So let's get to work and make sure that doesn't happen. When I did this for the footing, in hindsight, I didn't think it was very necessary, but wow, now that I'm doing it for the slab, 
I definitely would not pour a heated slab with insulation without this step. Like you can see the clear ring where I have and haven't compacted. Where I have compacted, it feels really like solid, like a, a slab almost that you're standing on. Where you haven't, it still feels kind of just like loose, mushy gravel. And with the insulation board in here, I just think the much better idea is to just do this extra step and get it nice and firm and compacted. That way the concrete's only fighting against just the movement of the rigid insulation board and not trying to squish down all of this kind of coarse, loose gravel. I thought this was oddly satisfying, so I'm gonna let this time lapse go way longer than it should. Anything I couldn't reach with the plate compactor, I tried to tamp by hand. It didn't really work that well. All right, the rental is returned, and I think we have a really solid flat slab base. The next step is gonna be putting my insulation board and vapor barrier down. That'll be followed by a grid of rebar at 12 inches on center. And then finally my radiant tubing. That's the last bit before the slab gets poured, which I have scheduled for a week from today. So I might need to take another couple days off this week and I'll be working through the weekend to get all those remaining steps done. But I'm gonna call it a wrap on this video. Thanks for joining me this week. Next week, you will see me doing the insulation, vapor barrier, and maybe even the rebar grid if I can get around to it. As always, follow more on the socials for more daily content. Thanks for watching and see you next time.